In 1936, Te Whanga Station was purchased by PJ Borthwick and a long association with New Zealand and Australia's meat industries by the Borthwick family began. The station also had a role as a training farm for returned servicemen. That teaching tradition continues today, with cadets from Taratahi Agricultural Training Centre being given an opportunity to gain work experience. But the farm's main focus is its Angus stud. It's about 10% flat to rolling country. Most of that's been developed into forages, either herbs or new grasses in the last three years, and then the rest is all breeding hill country. We're carrying about 18,000 stock units on 21, 35 effective hectares. The history of the farm, it's been in the Borthwick family for a long time. Uh, it was originally part of uh, Brantspeth, which was owned by the Williams family. And uh, Borthwicks have had it for a number of years. We've got our 80th sale coming up this year to give a bit of an idea, but yeah, a lot of history behind it. This country is very strong autumn and spring country. The weakness is we get 750 mils of rainfall a year and grow between four and a half and five and a half a tonne. So very summer dry, very testing on stock in those times. It is an expensive property. We're running a team of five of us at the moment. A lot of dog work on the hills, but also requiring guys that can think for themselves. We're getting in Teradai cadets on the second year program and sort of encouraging young guys to get ahead that way. i have employed one of them here, but it's a never-ending issue. Staff don't always hang around and getting the right people isn't always easy. As far as staffing goes, this place does have a bit of an appeal. The stock numbers that we're carrying, a lot of the young guys like running a dog. And another appeal to me anyway is the stud. Having 300 registered Angus carbon females, that's something else they can string to their bow. We've probably developed 90% of the flat to rolling country that we can. So now it's a matter of getting that in a rotation, fencing off waterways, still more fences to revert to conventional. There's been a big development program going on the last probably eight years. A lot of uh, capital expenditure on fencing, so things are pretty well up to scratch in those terms. So now it's uh, probably a matter of getting, spending the money to make the dollars rather than on the infrastructure. Right now with the sheep, we've got some early ewes that are getting pre lamb shorn, get a nice product on the way out. Condition's probably not quite where we want it to be with those girls, given the season we've had, but they're destined to lamb early on plantain and lambs away early to the works. We've also just pulled rams out of hobbits and they're heading on to herb crops. And then next job will be scanning. The wool isn't a huge focus for us, but it is a management advantage sharing them through picking up our lighter ewes, treating them differently. They'll get drafted off and get fed better and increase lamb survival and lamb birth weight. So it, it's more about the management than the wool. The breed of the sheep is a bit of a licorice all sort. It started from an old school Romney and then went through a stage with a Lincoln. The Finn went through at some stage and now we're back to a Warrika group Romney and just trying to tighten those sheep up. Most of the animals go store just because of our dry environment, so it's about putting a presentable store animal in front of them. We're scanning sort of early to mid 170s and lambing 130 to 140%. Weaning weights last year around 30 k, so there's room for improvement there. And uh, I think the next few years we'll start reaping the rewards of all the development we've done in terms of forages. The stud's been run by the Borthwicks for this will be the 80th year. Originally purchased cattle from Farazans and Waitranui studs in the Hawke's Bay. Tawonga has a pretty long history of producing some good cattle. Breed characteristics are still very important to us. An animal that's got good feet and legs, ability to walk, getting calf every year. Every female that's in the herd is reared to calf as a two-year-old and every year from then on and an easy doing animal. Obviously, we don't grow a lot of grass through the year, so it's something that um, can convert not a lot of grass into a lot of product. Um, we have 
recently purchased some more cattle from Farfield Stud, uh, which have got arguably some of the best performance genetics um, in the country. So that's uh, more of a focus on low birth weight, high growth rate, and targeting our yearling sale, which is uh, September. For the June sale, we're putting up around 25 bulls, which is only 30% of our bull crop. And with the addition of this new stud, we'll be closer to 10 to 15%, so it'll be a real elite June sale and up to 120 yearlings for the spring sale. Clients typically for our two-year-old sale, 90% of them are Warrapa based. We've got a few further afield and for our spring sale, we're stretching as far as Taranaki, Whanganui. A lot of dairy guys getting into it and using beef genetics over the dairy herds to get more value in their business. The eating quality is definitely becoming more of a focus. We are seeing premiums in some works, probably still not enough, but we are always trying to incorporate carcass characteristics, high emphasis on marbling and eye muscle area. We're about 500 calving females here at Tawonga, and now with the purchase of these new stud animals, we've gone from a one-third stud to commercial ratio to two-thirds stud. Um, yeah, so that Everything's farmed the same. Um, stud cows are out on the hills doing the doing the hard graft, just the same as the commercials are. This program was made with funding from New Zealand on air.